A U.S. carrier strike group headed by the most expensive warship, the aircraft carrier Gerald Ford, as well as the cruiser Normandy, three destroyers, Thomas Hudner, Remnage, and McFall, arrived in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. So literally, instantly, a huge force of up to four squadrons of modern fifth-generation F-35C fighter bombers and fourth-generation F-A-18 Hornet fighter bombers appeared in the Middle East region. Plus, four carriers of Tomahawk strike missiles with up to 90 to 96 such missiles each and a total of 110 missiles in a salvo. Recall that the range of the Tomahawk is up to 1,100 kilometers. And the second carrier strike group, led by the aircraft carrier Dwight Eisenhower, is on its way, the White House told reporters on October 11th. Why the U.S. urgently needed such a naval fist of impressive power in the Middle East region? We'll tell you in our video. Officially, U.S. authorities say that the aircraft carriers off the coast of Israel are only to deter neighboring countries, including Lebanon and Iran. Many military experts agree that aircraft carrier strike groups are indeed needed to stop other states, primarily Iran, from participating in the war. But they're not just for that purpose. The critical point is that the destroyers in this group are equipped with Aegis missile defense systems. First of all, they'll provide cover for Israel's territory from ballistic missiles. And they already do. The Iranian-backed Yemeni Houthis are attempting to launch their ballistic missiles and long-range kamikaze drones at Israel. However, because the launch munitions have to cross virtually the entire Red Sea, they are successfully hit by U.S. Navy ships. But if necessary, the system could be deployed to strike any Middle Eastern country. This option would require official U.S. intervention in the war. Judging by the statements we hear, they are prepared to do so in case an attack is launched by Iran. But will this arsenal be enough to cool Iran and prevent it from actively intervening in the conflict? After all, over the past two decades, this country, despite stifling economic sanctions, has managed to build an impressively strong army equipped with modern long-range missiles, attack drones, and other powerful weapons. To answer this question, let's take a detailed look at how the Americans can counter the Persians. First and foremost, of course, is the most powerful warship in the world the aircraft carrier Gerald Ford. The aircraft carrier Gerald Ford with the CVN-78 was laid down at the Newport News shipyard in Virginia in 2005. Its construction costs cost the Pentagon $12.8 billion. Another $4.7 billion was spent to develop the new aircraft carrier, which is the 11th operational U.S. aircraft carrier and the first carrier of the USS Gerald Ford class. All of the other 10 U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are in the Nimitz class. In October 2013, the aircraft carrier Gerald Ford was launched, and in 2017 joined the U.S. second fleet in the North Atlantic, succeeding the aircraft carrier Enterprise, CVN-65, which was decommissioned in 2012. The aircraft carrier Gerald Ford is 337 meters, 1105 feet long, and 78 meters, 256 feet wide. The height above the waterline is higher than a 10-story house. The ship's total displacement is 112,000 tons. But big and heavy doesn't mean slow. Seeing it on the water is like watching a huge house sail past you at 30 miles per hour. The ship has a total crew of 4,539, 2,600 crew members including 508 officers, about 2,500 air crews and 70 staff commanders. Automation of many processes has reduced the crew to 2,600, 700 fewer than on previous Nimitz-type aircraft carriers. The aircraft carrier is capable of carrying up to 90 helicopters and combat aircraft. The Gerald Ford aircraft carrier has a maximum load of 48 multi-role fighters and four squadrons. The Gerald Ford's combat aviation is represented by two squadrons, 24 units of fourth-generation F-A-18 Hornet deck fighter bombers and two squadrons of fifth-generation F-35C multi-role fighter bombers. Gerald Ford became the fourth U.S. Navy aircraft carrier to carry a deck-mounted variant of the F-35C fighter, and the U.S. carrier has more stealth aircraft than are available in the entire Russian armed forces. The F-35C modification does not have a shortened takeoff and vertical landing capability, as is the case with the F-35B variant for U.S. landing craft, the F-35C takes off and lands from the aircraft carrier deck using a hook and a special catapult, respectively. The carrier deck needs to be modernized for this type of fighter. 
The rest of the carrier's aviation strength is accounted for by the Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk multi-role helicopters, the SH-60F Oceanhawk anti-submarine helicopters, the HH-60H Seahawk deck search and rescue helicopters, and the Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion heavy amphibious transport helicopters. Also, two units of Grumman E-2 Hawkeye long-range radar detection rotary wing deck aircraft are based on the carrier. The F-35C can carry up to 8,160 kilograms of payload. These are AIM-120, AMRAM, AIM-132, ASRAM, AIM-9X Sidewinder and Irish T air-to-air -air missiles, AGM-154 JSW, AGM-158 JASM air-to-surface missiles, and GBU-31 JDAM guided drop bombs. The F-A-18 Hornet fighter bomber can carry up to 7 tons of armament. These are AIM-120, AIM-7 Sparrow, and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. AGM-88 Harm, Taurus, and AGM-84 Harpoon air-to-surface missiles, Mark-80 unguided bombs, CBU-87, and JDAM guided bombs. As anti-aircraft weapons, the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carriers are equipped with two MK-49 surface-to-air missile launchers, each equipped with 21 RIM-116A missiles. In addition, the ships are equipped with two eight-container launchers, MK-29, armed with RIM-162SM missiles. These weapons are designed to counter fast and maneuverable anti-ship missiles. RIM-116A SAMs are designed to engage targets within 10 kilometers, and RIM-162SM missiles to attack at a range of up to 50 kilometers, 30 miles. The Artillery Anti-Aircraft Weapon System consists of two six-barrel Phalanx MK-15 Block II guns of 20mm caliber of Gatling system with radar control, producing 4,500 rounds per minute. They're almost identical to the massive cannons of U.S. fighter jets such as the F-16. The cannons are designed to counter anti-ship missiles with subsonic flight speeds. For close-in defense, five 12.7mm M2 BMG 12.7mm large-caliber machine guns are mounted. The propulsion system includes two A1B nuclear reactors that provide electrical and propulsion power to all systems. The total thermal capacity of the A1B is about 700 megawatts, which is about 25% more than the A4W reactors that were put on the Nimitz-type ships. The A1B reactors produce enough steam to generate 125 megawatts or 168,000 horsepower of electricity, plus 260 megawatts or 350,000 horsepower to turn the four propeller shafts. Power for the ship's main ship systems and the new electromagnetic catapults is generated by four groups of Westinghouse steam turbines. Thanks to A1B reactors, the range of the Gerald R. Ford type aircraft carriers is virtually unlimited. Without replacing fuel rods, these ships can operate for 50 years, which means that the reactors will not need to be recharged for the entire life of the aircraft carrier. This allows the ship to cover any distance. The autonomy of travel is determined only by water and food supply and is 120 days. The maximum speed is 30 knots. On the aircraft carrier, Gerald Ford installed fundamentally new catapults, MLs, with electromagnetic rather than the steam principle of action. Now, when the plane takes off, you will not see picturesque clouds of steam. Moreover, Nimitz had four steam catapults and Gerald R. Ford had three electromagnetic ones. But at the same time, Gerald R. Ford provides 160, and if you really need it, then 220 airplane sorties per day. That's almost twice as many as Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. In fact, by sending the aircraft carrier Gerald Ford to the Middle East, the U.S. has sent two aircraft carriers. Despite the installation of such power-intensive equipment as catapults, this ship produces a huge surplus of power. By the admission of the U.S. Naval Forces Command, only half of the power generation capacity is currently utilized by the systems, and half remains available for future technologies. And what are those technologies? First and foremost are lasers. Their need for a $13 billion aircraft carrier is not just overdue, it's overripe. New anti-ship missiles from China, some of which are capable of maneuvering at hypersonic speeds above Mach 5, threaten to make the Gerald Ford and other American ships obsolete. Just as Japan used a new technology during World War II, attack squadrons, to sink the most powerful American and British battleships, 
These new missiles are capable of destroying the most advanced ships currently plowing the oceans. Although Russia also possesses hypersonic weapons, China is most concerned about the Navy. Over the past decade, the country's aggressively increased the size of its Navy, it now numbers 770, twice the size of the U.S. Navy, and has developed several anti-ship weapons, including highly maneuverable hypersonic missiles capable of reaching speeds of Mach 10. One of its weapons test sites, tucked away in the Taklamakan Desert, has full-size mock-ups of U.S. aircraft carriers, which they use for target practice. The fate of the world's most powerful ship could be decided by a single, accurate, hypersonic shot. To prevent this from happening and the aircraft carrier from suffering the same fate as the battleships of World War II, the Pentagon is betting on lasers. No matter how fast or powerful anti-ship missiles become, the U.S. Navy hopes its futuristic lasers can burn them out of the sky for less than the price of a cup of coffee. The benefits of using lasers are tantalizing. Powered by a powerful source of electricity and the huge Gerald Ford nuclear reactors meet all requirements, lasers fire at the speed of light, negating the speed of hypersonic weapons. They can reload quickly to fend off swarms of drones, and they don't require ammunition reserves, giving the ships virtually unlimited firepower. In general, an aircraft carrier strike group has enough equipment to intercept dozens of approaching missiles up to 320 kilometers 200 miles away. But it becomes defenseless once ships run out of fire interceptors, which must be stored and then resupplied after combat. Some ammunition can be replenished at sea, while missiles must be replenished back in port. The Pentagon calls this the magazine depth problem, which enemies can exploit in massive attacks. Lasers solve this problem once and for all. Experts estimate that to stop a barrage of cruise missiles or hypersonic weapons traveling at Mach 5 or faster requires a laser with a power of at least 300 kilowatts. That weapon appears to be on its way. The Navy plans to begin testing a 300 kilowatt weapon as early as next year and is calling the experimental weapon Hellcap, High Energy Laser Countermeasures Program, ASCOM. ASCOM stands for Anti-Ship Cruise Missile. But that's all in the future. In the meantime, the aircraft carrier strike group, led by the aircraft carrier Gerald Ford, clearly demonstrated the steel American muscles in the Middle East and clearly showed Iran what would happen to it if it tried to attack Israel. We very much hope that the U.S. will be able to use Gerald Ford to block this conflict and prevent it from escalating into World War III. And on that positive note, we end our video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share your thoughts in the comments. We'll see you soon.